this is Ross with DIY on the house. We're talking disposals today. 90% of the houses are better have disposals in them. And there's usually something during that time span um, while the disposal's in, you're going to have a blockage, you're going to have an obstruction to get into the disposal. And so I'm going to show you today how to remove it from a cutaway disposal that we made. And also at the end of the video, then I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly how if you put down peelings, um, if something's blocked up in that basin and, and the other basin is draining, how to do, remove the blockage that's in going in the discharge pipe. One of the most common leaks in the disposal is either a hole in the housing or a crack in the housing um, due to either rot over age or the force of something inside the disposal while it's spinning and it just throws it against the side of the housing and just cracks it. So I'll show you a couple of different ones. On a disposal that's starting to actually disintegrate or rot out, um, you'll start noticing, you'll get, start getting these white spots right around the uh, top of the housing here and also you may have a hole. This one actually had a hole on the side of it and I'm actually just poked it right in. And what that'll do is when you turn it on um, or during just normal sink use, you'll have some leakage here. When you turn it on, it will just flat chuck food everywhere across the uh, bottom of the cabinet. And talk about nasty, it's a, it's a stinky deal. Another cause of a uh, disposal leaking or failure is gonna be a crack in the housing. And you can actually see this one here running down. And then also there's a location right here where it was leaking as well. And so what happens in that is either something is put down and maybe a spoon or something falls in and you turn on the disposal. And these disposals all turn, uh, as far as the sink rators go, at 1700 RPM. Um, as far as the horsepower, the third horse and the half horsepower, those are just power ratings. They all turn at the same RPM, but one just has more power as it's grinding. So that's another failure. So Kara just stopped me and said, what's RPM? And she said, talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. <laughs> so so uh, RPM is rotations per minute. What it is, is one rotation full per minute. So these disposals turn 1700 times in one minute, which is extremely fast. So the same thing is like on your car. If you have an RPM gauge, that's how many rotations the motor's running. And it's exactly the same as in these. If your disposal gets a jam in it, these disposals, the insincorators, have a thermal overload. That means, you know, if something stops the motor, it gets so hot, it will just absolutely save itself by this little button back here. This is a thermal overload button. And so what will happen is it'll hum, it'll heat up, this button will actually pop off, save the disposal from um, destroying itself. Whenever you're working on a disposal, you need to make sure that the switch is off. And that's the switch that's usually above the sink or there's a push button switch. It's, it's just the switch that activates the uh, disposal. Obviously it's in your house, so you know where it's at. Just make sure it's off when you're actually working on a disposal. When I install a disposal, I always leave this wrench below the uh, cabinet. This wrench actually comes with uh, the insincorator disposal. And uh, so this wrench actually fits in the bottom of the uh, motor. And when you turn it to unlock it, you may find some resistance, but you just got to put a little bit of pressure on it, keep working it until it finally breaks loose. Once this is done, then you can hit your reset button and then hit your switch on the wall and uh, hopefully that'll start making it run again. If it doesn't or you hear some rattling, that means there's something in it that you'll have to go fishing for. What I've done on this particular disposal is I actually cut open this area here to show you what's going on inside. So when you put your wrench down below to unlock it, okay, you're actually turning this shaft and this shaft actually is also connected to uh, the grinding area here. So when you do that, that's what you're turning. This is actually the blades. They're fixed in location. They don't move. And what happens is that the motor actually moves right here. I'm rotating it. And then there's these pieces right here. When you stick your hands down in from the inside, you'll actually feel those. And they're not the blades. All these do is move the food to the exterior of the disposal. So when it's spinning at 1700 RPM, it's throwing food 
against these blades. These blades grind up the food. It drops down into this lower chamber through these holes. And then it is discharged right through the side here. So when a disposal gets an obstruction, it's going to be something jammed between here and here. Right now I've got a little, I got a penny stuck in there. And that's what you're, you're going to be looking for. Anything and everything that gets stuck between this plate right here and the exterior. So, so two things I need uh, when I have a disposal that's having a blockage or it's stuck. Um, always the flashlight and a pair of needle nose. What I'll do is I'll take the flashlight and I'll shine it down and try to locate around the armature until I find what is actually uh, caught in between here. Then I'll take my needle nose, reach down and grab a hold of it and pull it out and get rid of the obstruction. At this point, if the disposal still isn't you know, working because of the thermal overload, just reach down, click the button on the bottom of it and it should take right off. And make sure you're running water. What I'm gonna do is I've got this cut away. This is actually a running disposal. So, and obviously not anymore because there's a big old hole in it. I'm gonna plug it in and I'll show you the uh, rotation of the blades and then I'll throw a little piece of something down there to see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in, get my hand out. And you can actually see that, what's going on. Now I'm gonna drop something in. Uh, it's a little piece of wood. It's probably going to I'll show you what happens. <laughs> so that took off. <laughs> that took off really fast. Just another couple things that uh, on a disposal. If you've put peelings down, or you know, artichoke, uh, potato peelings, celery, rice, most. Most and all of that is going to get discharged through the disposal and it's going to be in a pipe leading from the disposal to the other sink. And there's a T there, it's called a baffle T. And it's because it's two parts. That's where that food is going to get stuck. You have, and if you have a blockage in your one sink with your disposal, the other sink is draining, you actually have to remove that pipe down the other sink and then it'll actually, a lot of stuff will come out. Uh, maybe water and then you have to empty those peelings, everything out of that and uh, that'll get you freed up on that point. Another thing is if you um, have a stop or a obstruction in the disposal, don't take the disposal down. You can use, I have 100% of the time removed everything from through the hole, just using a flashlight, a screwdriver, whatever. If you take the disposal down, you're gonna end up, there's a seal on it, that seal may be broken. There's also a couple other seals. And it's a real pain um, to get it back together. Um, I've put in hundreds, probably thousands of disposals over the last 20 some years. And so it's easy for me, for someone that hasn't done it at all, uh, it could be a real booger to try to get that disposal back up there, get the lock ring in and get everything right, get everything resealed. Um, so I just suggest everything you can do, take it out through the top. Um, if you have it to where you can't get it, you may end up having to call a handyman or a plumber. So I hope you liked the video today. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And also, there's a subscribe button down below. It's like that. And if you would like to leave a comment, do, do that as well. And uh, we really appreciate you watching the video from DIY on the house.